Hi everybody and welcome to my video on the topic of probability and I guess we ought to start by deciding what probability means. When we're looking at the probability of something happening, what we are talking about is how likely it is that that thing will happen. Or maybe we say, what are the chances of that happening? So maybe I say, what is the likelihood of it raining today? What are the chances that it will rain? What I'm asking for is the probability that it is going to rain. So we can use probability for general things, but we can also calculate it mathematically. And in this video, we're going to have a look at how to do both of those things. First thing I want to do is cover some important words that in fact you might find are the actual answers to questions. The first of those is the word certain. So we are talking about something that is certain to happen. For instance, if I toss a coin, I will get either a head or I'll get a tail. That is certain. There are no other options. If something is likely, well, it doesn't mean it's absolutely certain, but it's probably going to happen. Let's imagine for a moment that you have a bag full of coloured counters and there are, shall we say, nine blue counters and one red. Now, if you put your hand into the bag without looking and pull out a counter, it is likely that you are going to pull out a blue one because there are more blues than reds. So that is likely. Even chance. Now, if we go back to that coin that we tossed, we are going to get a head or a tail. So the chances of getting heads are one chance out of two. It's an even chance as to whether you will get a head or a tail. Let's have a look at unlikely. Well, if we go back to this bag full of coloured counters and you put your hand in, it is unlikely that you're going to get the red one because there are a lot more blue ones. So unlikely is pretty much the opposite of likely. Impossible. Now, let's go back to this bag of counters again. We said there were nine blue and one red. So if you put your hand in and you ask, what are the chances of pulling out a green counter? The answer is that is impossible because there are none there. Now, I do just want to clarify one thing here, and that is the difference between unlikely and impossible, because some students do seem to mix the two up. If I asked the question, how likely it is that it will not rain at all in England in the year 2021, you would practically say that is impossible. But in fact, it is very, very unlikely. Technically, it could happen. Therefore, you cannot answer impossible as unlikely as it might seem. Impossible things have to be completely impossible. Now, probability can be shown on something that we call a probability line. And if we look at this end of the line here, we say this is the end where things are impossible. Therefore, it has a probability of zero. At the other end of the scale, of course, is something that is absolutely certain. Now, when something is absolutely certain, we say that it has a probability of one and everything else is in between zero and one. So if something like tossing a coin, you either get a head or a tail, it is a even chance we say that has a probability of a half. So this end here is impossible, this is certain, and this is even chance. So as you can imagine, the further we go down this scale, the less likely it is that something is going to happen. So this side here is things that are unlikely to happen. So not raining all next year is incredibly unlikely, it would be down this end here somewhere. And opposite wise, if there is a better than even chance, but it is not absolutely certain, then it means that it is more likely. And that is how the probability line works. Remember, everything is in between zero and one. 
Now you'll notice that in the centre here, under even chance, I wrote one out of two. So in fact, what I've written here is a fraction, a half. Now, I could have put 50% even chance. They're all good way of describing that. But we tend to use fractions when we are describing probability. And you'll see why in some of the examples coming up. OK, here comes the technical part. At the top here is the actual formula which helps us work out the probability of something happening. It looks a little bit awful. The number of ways for something to happen divided by the total number of possible outcomes. Let's not worry too much about the wording. Let's just see how it works. Here we have the bag we mentioned earlier with the coloured counters in there. So at the moment there are one, two, three, four, five blue counters and there are five red counters. We are going to try to work out the probability of us picking out a blue counter. So we put our hand in and we take out one of the counters. Now look at the top line of this equation. The number of ways for something to happen. Well, in this case, that something to happen is what we are wanting. It is the blue counter. So how many ways could I pick out a blue counter? Well, I could pick that one, that one, that one, that one, or that one. So there are five possible ways that I could pick out the blue counter. It's just the number of blue ones in there. And we put the line. The bottom is the total number of possible outcomes. Well, there are 10 counters in there. So there are 10 possible counters I could get out. Therefore, 10 possible outcomes. So quite simply, all this long wording here simply says that out of 10 counters altogether, Five of them are blue, so the chances of me getting a blue ball are five out of ten. And there's our fraction. Now, what do we do with the fraction? Well, as always, if we see a fraction like that, we try to simplify it. And if we simplify five out of ten, we get one out of two. If you're not sure about rules on simplification, it is covered in another of my videos. Go and have a look at that one. But to continue, a half would be the probability. And if you think of it logically, in that bag at the moment, half of them are blue. So the probability is half. It is not as complicated as this top formula suggests. Now, let's do something to change things. So as it stands at the moment, blue is a half. So let's actually go ahead, put our hand in there and take out a blue counter. We are now looking again at putting our hand in for a second time. So that was the first time. Now it's the second time. We want to look at the probability again of us getting a blue counter. Things have changed. Now there are only four blue counters. So there are only four ways we could get the blue one. How many counters are in the bag altogether? How many could we possibly pick from? Well, one's gone missing, so it's no longer 10, it is now 9. So looking at the picture, there are now 4 blues out of 9 counters. Therefore, the probability is 4 out of 9. You can't simplify 4 out of 9, so it stays there. I'm going to do it again and take another one out. So the second time, we did actually get the blue again. So the third time we go in there, there are only 3 blue ones left out of a total of eight counters. So your probability is now three eighths. Now, think about the probability of getting a red one right now. So if we were looking to say, I want a red one this time, there are five red ones out of the total of eight. So the probability of getting a red one is five out of eight. And that is how we work out probability. So if I was to take a red one out now, the probability of getting a blue ball now is three out of seven. Red ones, four out of seven. Here's a quick example just to highlight how straightforward this can be. Imagine this is the breakfast menu in maybe a guest house and you walk down one morning uh, without realizing what day it is and you're looking at the probability of being served cereal. Well, there are seven days in a week, therefore the whole probability comes from the number seven and you've got to ask yourself how many days do they serve cereal wednesday and saturday so two days out of seven there is your probability two out of seven two sevenths chance that you will get cereal for your breakfast 
So don't forget when you're answering questions in exams, some questions will ask you probability with a general idea. How likely is it to snow in July? How likely is it that it will get dark at the end of the day? So you can say very unlikely or certain and give an opinion. There are other questions like the one here where you actually have to give a mathematical answer. So I hope that's given you some insight into the world of probability. If you have found that useful, as always, please hit the subscribe button and I put a link here to one of my other videos. Please pass comments if there's something else you'd like me to cover in the future. Thank you.